Hello Saints, this is the second part to the last video called Is Jesus God? And we got to the point where we began speaking about the Trinity. And the Trinity as being proof that Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are one and the same. Three in one, and one being all three. Now, if you watch the first part, the uh, first video, I listed verse after verse after verse using a wide variety of books in the Bible other than Paul's books. However, unlike all the false teachers out there, I refuse to place Apostle Paul on the shelf trying to justify the many twisted versions of the Bible that are out there today. Anyhow, the last video was verse after verse, proof after proof that Jesus clearly claimed to be God. That God claimed to be Jesus and I've shown you in Scripture that without a doubt Jesus and God are the same person having equal authority and equal power now we look at the third person the Holy Spirit and we'll see here that the Holy Spirit is Jesus is God all three having equal authority with each other because all three are actually the same being Listen, friends, understanding the Trinity shouldn't be really that difficult. Are we not made up ourselves of three properties? We have a body, which is flesh. We have a conscience, and we have a spirit, three properties. One way to look at it is mind, body, and soul. Another way can be body, soul, and spirit. Either way, we ourselves are made in God's image. God has three properties in his makeup and so do we if you recall God said let us make man in our image so who is he speaking to here he must have been speaking to somebody he wasn't speaking to, to himself well kind of he was actually speaking to himself but he was talking to all three parts of himself he's talking to the son and the Holy Spirit plus himself making man in his image having three properties in one and it's really that simple and it should be kept simple instead of trying to twist things and listening to false teachings out there whose ultimate goals are always to destroy who Jesus Christ is and what he's done for us according to 1 Corinthians 15 1 through 4 now in reference to the Trinity look at Isaiah 48 Isaiah 48 16 and 17 come ye near unto me hear ye this I have not spoken in secret from the beginning from the time that it was there am I and now the Lord God and his spirit hath sent me now Isaiah says there am I the Lord God his spirit being the Holy Spirit and we start to see the different aspects of God's character call it the Trinity call it the a tri being uh, call it what you want there's three parts to God Jesus the Father and his spirit three in one and now we continue in verse 17 thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer the Holy One of Israel I am the Lord thy God which teacheth thee to profit which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go now we see even in the Old Testament that God would one day become flesh the seed of the woman thus the Lord Jesus God Jesus and the Holy Spirit another place we see God as a triune being is in John 15 John 15 26 but when the comforter is come that's the third part whom I will send unto you from the Father there's the first part and who's speaking Jesus so we see three parts even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father he shall testify of me we see the comforter the Holy Spirit and Jesus says whom I will send so there's Jesus God in the flesh whom I will send unto you from the Father, there is God the Father, the third part which is uh, proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Clearly three parts being one again. Now another place we can look at is Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. The baptism under the dispensation of law and kingdom, Jesus tells his Jewish disciples to go out and baptize in the name of God, the flesh himself, and the spirit. Now, for those of you not familiar with the different dispensations, 
when uh, you know when Jesus tells his disciples to go out baptizing they were still under the dispensation of law going into the kingdom they would have been they would have went straight into the kingdom if they would have accepted Jesus as their Messiah they, they still had a chance to accept Jesus as their reigning king before stoning Stephen now the dispensation of grace hadn't been revealed to Paul yet so it didn't exist at this time so they went out baptizing under the Jewish dispensation of the coming kingdom that that never came because they rejected uh, Jesus and they killed Stephen by stoning him and then God moves the world into the 2000 year dispensation of grace the mystery the secret gospel that God kept from the foundation of the world in himself then he reveals it to Paul after he's converted on his way to Damascus and throughout his decades of teaching the gospel of grace the mystery gospel for the body of Christ simply said the dispensation of grace under Paul was a secret that God kept to himself that one day after they rejected Jesus and all the prophets God would create a body the body of Christ a body of members and he'd make that body of believers fellow heirs with his son Jesus sons and no longer servants okay and continuing on note also that how Jesus casted out demons cured the sick and did all the other miracles in his own name also on many occasions Jesus deliberately almost to hint kind of to those listening Jesus said I am and we know this wasn't taken lightly by the Jews when Jesus said I am this didn't just go over their heads they knew exactly what Jesus was saying and we see their reaction from this look at John 10:30. I and my father are one a short simple to the point statement that cannot mean anything other than Jesus and God are one and the same the Jews knew exactly what Jesus meant by this look at what happens in John 10 33 the Jews answered him saying for a good work we stone thee not but for blasphemy and because that thou being a man makest thyself God Jesus's statement was clearly understood by the Jews Jesus was calling himself God and they called it blasphemy the reason why they wanted to stone him listen what it all boils down to the reason the Jews killed Jesus is because he claimed to be God in the flesh and under the Mosaic law the, the commandments they read what it stated that thou shall have no other gods before me no idol worship and so on so because of their law mindedness they saw Jesus as a blasphemer saying he was equal with God being God in the flesh you know to say that Jesus never claimed to be God is to say that the Jews killed him for another reason okay so in order for Muslims to reconcile this they say that Jesus was never killed he never rose from the dead and so goes the list of lies they keep denying one thing after another and another now another example we can look at is John 8 58 Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you before Abraham was I am again this angers the Jews and they take up stones to attack Jesus for blasphemy we see that in the next verse in 59 uh, you know, why would the Jews want to stone Jesus if he hadn't said something that they believed to be absolutely blasphemous namely a claim to be God and John repeatedly tells us of the Lord's connection to the phrase I am and we see it in John 4 John 8 and John 13 the Apostle Paul tells us that Jesus is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature in Colossians 1 15 to 18 who is in the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him 
verse 17 and he is before all things and by him all things consist in John 1 1 says the word was God John 1 14 says and the word was made flesh so if the word was God and the word became flesh who does that remind you of Jesus he, he's the one that became flesh and he dwelt among us this clearly indicates that Jesus is God in the flesh Acts 20:28 20, tells us be shepherds of the church of God which he brought which he bought with his own blood who who bought the church with his own blood saints Jesus Christ and at the beginning of this be shepherds of the church of God which he God being he bought with his own blood so we see a reference here God being he being Jesus okay so in this verse it clearly declares that God purchased the church with his own blood therefore we see Jesus is God however he in no way conforms to our human understanding okay try to wrap your head around this Jesus's nature as being both totally human and totally God now to help you out with this a little bit consider the paradox that was said by an early church father named Gregory of Nazianzus in uh, between 329 to 390 AD now Gregory uses these arguments against Arianism he speaking of Jesus was baptized as a man but he remitted sins as God he was tempted as a man but he conquered as God he hungered but he fed thousands he was wearied but he is the rest of them that are weary and heavy laden he was heavy with sleep but he walked lightly over the sea he pays tribute but it's out of a fish yet he is the king of those who demanded this payment he prays but he hears prayer he weeps but he causes tears to cease he asked Lazarus uh, he asked where Lazarus was laid for he was a man but he raises Lazarus for he was God then and is the same God today so he sold cheaply for 30 pieces of silver but he redeems the world and he did it with a great price the price was his blood as a sheep he is led to the slaughter but he is the shepherd of Israel and now of the whole world also he is bruised and wounded but he heals every disease and every infirmity he is lifted up and nailed to a tree but by the tree of life he restores us he dies but he gives life and by his death he destroys death also quoting another person Alexandria back somewhere between 30, 376 and 400 AD indeed the mystery of Christ runs the risk of being disbelieved precisely because it is so incredibly wonderful for God was in humanity he who was above all creation was in our human condition the invisible one was made visible in the flesh he who is from the heavens and from on high was in the likeness of earthly things the immaterial one could be touched he who is free in his own nature came in the form of a slave he who blesses all creation became accursed he who is all righteousness was numbered among the transgressors life itself came in the appearance of death all this followed because the body which tasted death belonged to no other but to him who is the son by nature and this is a clear image of the unity of Christ and my favorite verse showing just who Jesus is to the body of Christ today is first Matthew 316 and without controversy great is the mystery of godliness God was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit seen of angels preached unto the Gentiles believed on in the world and received up into glory we see two verses proving each other 
only the way God can do it in his word. Look at and keep in mind, this is written in 712 BC, long before the birth of our Lord Jesus. Isaiah 714, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now we see the twin verse of Isaiah 714 in Matthew 1, 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Another verse written long ago in the 700 BC, Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us is a child is born. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The child, the son, called the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, no doubt Jesus is God, and God being Jesus. Take a look at another verse showing that God is Jesus in Luke, Luke 7, 16. And there came a fear on all. And they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. Another favorite verse of mine, and we saw this in the last video as well, is John 1, 1 2, 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Look at verse 3. All things were made by him, the word, and without the word, Jesus, nothing was made. The word here is clearly Jesus Christ, who always existed without creation or end, the Alpha and Omega. We see yet again Jesus making himself equal with God in John 5:18. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. In John 10:30, 30, 33, and 36 again, we see the reason why they wanted to stone Jesus. He was making himself equal to the Father. Once again, we see Jesus. Uh, he uses the phrase, I am. He says this over and over again to hint to them that he was God in the flesh, the I am. In John 13, 13, ye call me master and Lord, and ye say well, for so I am. Another verse where we see Jesus using the phrase, I am, claiming to be God in the flesh is Mark 14, 61 to 63. But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Clearly, Jesus is saying, I am God. And look at how angry the high priest gets in the next verse, in 63. Then the high priest rent his clothes, he tore his clothes, and said, What need we any further witnesses? He was highly upset. Take a look at this one. A famous verse you probably heard before is Psalm 110, verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Another powerful verse pointing to the divinity of Jesus. Here we see Philip asking Jesus to show him the Father in John 14, 9. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doth the works. Clearly, Jesus is saying, if you've seen me, you've seen God the Father. There's no mistaking what these verses mean. In the next verse, we see that Jesus has always existed long before his virgin birth came around in John 17:5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me 
with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So, and we saw in part one how Thomas was doubting that the figure standing before him was actually the risen Lord Jesus. So, Jesus tells Thomas to stick his hand into his side. And the moment Thomas touches our Lord Jesus and verifies that it has to be Jesus and no one else, He's now convinced, and we see his reaction here in John 20, 28. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Now keep in mind what the commandments state, they, that, that no one other than God is to be worshipped or called God other than the true living God. And here we see Thomas calling Jesus God and Lord worshiping him and Jesus doesn't rebuke Thomas whatsoever for calling him God but Jesus welcomes what Thomas said another piece of evidence pointing to the fact that Jesus is God clearly worshiped as God and allowing and accepting anyone around him to worship him as God look at 2 Corinthians verse chapter 4 verse 4 look what Paul says in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them who is in the image of God again Jesus being the image of God clearly Jesus being seen as equal with God by our Apostle Paul in Colossians 1 14 to 17 in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist now in verse 14 we see through his blood that's Jesus's blood okay verse 15 Jesus in the image of God in verse 16 for by him Jesus were all things created if all things were created and we read in Genesis that God created all things and Jesus wasn't even born yet but here we see that Jesus created all things you put two and two together Jesus has to be God I mean through simple reasoning and deduction anyone can see and deduce from this that Jesus is indeed God so through verse 17 pointing to the Creator as being Jesus Christ God in the flesh who created all things both visible and invisible in Philippians 2 5 to 7 let this mind be in you which also was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men in Colossians 2 9 for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Clearly, we see Paul here saying that Jesus was God in bodily form. In other words, in the flesh. In 1 Timothy 6.15, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In Hebrews 1, 2-3, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the world who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high in Hebrews 1 8 but unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness 
is the scepter of thy kingdom. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Revelation 19.16, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. John 8, 24. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Now back in the Old Testament for a minute in Zechariah 12, 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn in Matthew 7 we see a picture of the nation of Israel being brought through the 70th week of Daniel the tribulation period having to endure till the end to be saved the dispensation of the kingdom once again those saying Lord Lord at the second coming in Matthew 7 21 not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven now what's the kingdom of heaven here Saints that's right this is the earthly kingdom Jesus establishes in the second coming he's saying here some will be able to enter the earthly kingdom that he builds uh, for the millennial reign and some won't be able to enter the kingdom in Isaiah 8 8 and he shall pass through Judah he shall overflow and go over he shall reach even to the neck and the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of thy land O Emmanuel O Emmanuel here means God among us Jeremiah 23 5 6 Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And in his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. The next verse, Revelation 19 here we see Jesus leading the army of heaven in Revelation 19 11 through 14 and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but himself and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen white and clean notice in verse 13 the Word of God remember the Word was made flesh and the Word was God again we see Jesus is God here no mistake about it in Revelation 1 8 I am o Alpha and Omega the beginning and the ending saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty I being Jesus the word the Alpha and the Omega again no mistake about it Jesus is claiming to be God Jesus is God he existed with God before the beginning and will be here after the ending for eternity okay and we're gonna be with him that's awesome this next verse, God himself is speaking in Isaiah 42, 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Clearly, Jesus and God are one. They have to be, if they're not to share their glory with any other God or person, right? Again, we see our Lord God not giving glory to anyone but himself, Again in Isaiah 48 11 for mine own sake even for mine own sake will I do it for how should my name be polluted and and I will not give my glory unto another in John 
Here we see Jesus praying just prior to the crucifixion, John 17, 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. We see here Jesus speaking of being part of the Godhead himself, since God doesn't share his glory. Also, Jesus tells us he had this glory with the Father, with God, before creation. The scriptures bear unmistakable testimony to the creative uh, activity of God's Son, distinguishing him from among the things created as the creator and sustainer of all things. Now, what about the term or phrase, Son of Man? The expression Son of Man was used in the Old Testament by Daniel as the term for Messiah, who at his second coming would come with the clouds of heaven and the same scene was described in more detail by John and I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like unto the son of man the Messiah having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle that's in Revelation 14 14 all throughout scripture we see Jesus being called and Jesus calling himself the son of man Using Son of Man really it was a, an expression uh, of, of humility. It was an indication of how God actually, um, how he was willing to lower himself to mankind's level by being born of a virgin, okay, in humility and becoming a servant. The chief priest and the teachers of law were familiar with the term Son of Man, and they knew it meant the Son of God. And when Jesus was led before the Council of Elders uh, in Luke 22, he made the statement that hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. And they asked, Are you then the Son of God? You see, they knew the Son of Man meant the Son of God as being equal with God. Okay, And Jesus answers, ye say that I am and his enemies confirmed that they understood this to be a claim by Jesus to be again the Son of God uh, and we know that by their responses okay and they said what need we any further witness for we ourselves have heard of his own mouth in the next verse we see the authority the Son has in John 5 22 to 23 for the Father judges no man but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. Which brings up a, a point. In other religions, they don't believe Jesus is God, and they definitely don't honor Jesus as they do God, so here we read clearly that he that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. That's serious. John 10:37 to 38 If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Now in closing, We've gone over all the scripture, most of it, which clearly cannot be denied that Jesus is God and God is Jesus and also the Trinity as being all three and all three as being one. Now clearly, the false teachings, the false religions that try to remove Jesus' authority as God in the flesh are simply reducing him, reducing Jesus to a mere man that had no power and he was just another prophet. And the lies go on and on and on. And those lies are not in God's word, my friends. But those lies are in their books that they write. Okay? Like the Quran being one of them. And all the other books man has written apart from God's word. They do these things to justify their teachings of tradition and man's doctrines being false doctrines. Their false teachings and lies and so on. And not only are the Muslims misled, not only... Are, are the Catholics being misled but many within the body of Christ are being misled as well and they're being misled from preachers out there who call themselves saved 
and in the body of Christ. And the, but at the same time, they insist on teaching traditions instead of teaching God's word, rightly divided, teaching uh, the meaning of dispensations, and you know, teaching people how to understand the Bible. Why aren't they doing those things? That's why I continue to say 99% of the body of Christ is absolutely lost. And there's very few of us out there today that understand right division and dispensation. And the only way you can understand the Bible, God's word, is if you first understand dispensation. I mean, that that's just the truth. I have a video that I made not too long ago uh, starting where to start as a new Christian. If you haven't heard that video, even if you've been saved for a long, long time, I suggest you go watch that video and it let, may it refresh you in the body of Christ. So with that, my friends, thanks for studying with me, saints. Peace, grace, and love in Christ Jesus be with all of you and your families during this time. And I'll see you on the next video.